just want to say thank you to the Public Theater for supporting us for 11 years, and thank you also to Howl Round. Uh, those folks came on uh, a few years ago to help us live stream from the lobby, and now they're helping us create this beautiful community. And so we can meet four days a week and talk with you about your work and your creative process, which this is all about. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to work for 20 minutes, and then we're going to talk with you. And if you have a question about your creative process, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Go, Audrey. Thanks, SLP. Um, so as a reminder, if you are inside of the Zoom and you have a question, all you need to do is click on the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop uh, or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. And inside of the participant tab is a little raise your hand button. Click on that, a little blue hand will appear and I will call on you if there is time. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.TV, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, or you can uh, tweet at the Public Theater, which is at Public Theater NY, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram. And that's it. Or you can get one of those owls and send an owl or a pigeon. I'll open my window. That'd be great. My, okay. Or a pigeon. And I'll open Either my, way. Or a bat. And I'll, yeah, right. There are bats up here in upstate New York. Anyway. All right. Here we go. Uh -huh.
<laughs> hmm. Hello. Hi. 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 So here we are. Back. We're back. And maybe someone has a question. Or... I don't see. Oh, got one. Roxanne, you're up first. Thank you. Um, hello. Hi there. I wanted to know, um, uh, uh, concerning research, what are some specific ways or places to find information you need? I know I've been kind of just roaming around Netflix and finding like old movies, for example, you know, going to the library when you can go to the library, but are there like specific places that a playwright can go for research when you don't have a dramaturge? Oh, I see the last part of your question was very telling. Um, so, so right. So um, are you custom Roxanne to working with dramaturgs or turges or however you pronounce that word? Um, I don't know how to say it, but no, uh, I'm not, I'm not. Okay, because I only work with them uh, those very helpful uh, scholar type folk when I'm in production. Okay. So uh, when the play has been written and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten, and then we get into production and then I'm working with them and they're more of a facilitator. They sort of help the production achieve something. They don't really help. I, I mean, uh, of course I'm helped also, but they primarily in my experience are there to serve this, not only the playwright and the play, but also the whole production. Um, so they might give actors things to look at or reference points, materials to read and that kind of thing. That might include some things I've already read as a, the writer, but that might be things that I've never even encountered. Um, so you're writing something, a play, <coughs> excuse me, and, <coughs> excuse me again. Bless you. Thank you. You're writing a play and you wonder where's a good place to do research. I would say, yeah, I'd say, of course, the library. Um, the library is mostly online now anyway. Um, so uh, it depends what it is that you're looking for. For example, picture, you know, images of New York City in the 1970s. You know, you'd want to, you could, I think, watch some early Scorsese films, for example. You know what I mean? That's a good place. It depends what you're looking for. So. So can you just briefly tell us what kind of thing you're, you're looking for and maybe we can tell you where to go. Hold yeah, on. I am looking for um, how slang in the uh -huh. 1950s, particularly if there's anything specific among black servicemen who were stationed abroad. Right, right. So um, maybe there are biographies of, of these brothers or autobiographies maybe somewhat you know you can look you can zoom around uh the library online um you can look for maybe articles in magazines um if you know of any men who were back in the day servicemen black servicemen that's a good, you know, firsthand information is always interesting also and super helpful. Um, you can, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Hmm. Um, you can also, you know, find, if you find some, again, you can find some real, you know, some like, if you look in, say, maybe a, a magazine or maybe, and look for it, maybe also in the, the predominantly black magazines and newspapers. New Amsterdam News, Chicago Defender, The Crisis, you know, um, those kinds of magazines that might have had stories uh, written by folks for folks, you know, you know what I mean? So they might be more likely maybe to include um, things of, of, of wide ranging interest. I mean, of a wide, you know, slant, you know, they might be able to, they might be inclined to include stuff like that. And then you yeah. can always make up a few things. Well, <laughs> I mean, unless, no, I mean, no. <laughs> well, unless you're, I mean, unless it's a, an historical document for a scholarly publication. No. Okay, great. So you might find three actual slang terms, you know, and make up a couple of them yourself. I don't know. Okay. I mean, you're allowed. It's, it's a, you're writing a, a work of fiction, a play. So. Yeah. 
Thank you. This was yeah. uh, really helpful. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Roxanne. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Crystal. Hey, Crystal. How you doing? Hi. I'm doing okay. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Really good to see you. Um, so I um, I brought my draft in um, to present, and um, it didn't go so great. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I got a set of news that would basically have me start over. Um, I think it was. He, he wanted he wanted it to be structured differently and he didn't feel that it answered the questions the who am i um how did i get here and um what it, what do i hope for um the thing i was able to accomplish was i was able to make this person this demagogue um relatable relatable kind uh -huh. of understood uh -huh. understandable which seemed to be impossible to the to one of the persons who critiques her um, um, and so it, it went well in that regard, but everything else was kind of like, you know, um, so I guess my question is, um, I guess I, now I'm kind of, I'm not confused. I just don't know how to approach so, such notes, you know, that's, mm -hmm. um, cause I thought I was answering the question. So he even made me answer, like, he was like, why did you pick her? And my answer was, well, this person, according to a demagogue, they use fear, they use religion, they use racism to get mm -hmm. their agenda. And so this person used Christianity and used fear to, to extract rights from a group of people. And mm -hmm. so like, for me, it was like, like I'm a Christian. So it was like, how could someone take something like Christianity and use it for hate? what ended up being a you know a movement of hate and i mean we've done we've seen this happen many times yes um but how could one person who's like just someone who's like a beauty queen really do so much so much damage in the name of the lord you know um and so um and he was like i love that answer I, you know i was touched by that answer um but now he his challenge was basically <laughs> dramatize that answer through this person and it was like what <laughs> um and follow the structure and answer those questions um so i'm kind of like i i have to try to present it either this friday or next friday which doesn't give me a lot of time um but i'm just kind of like you know help you know <laughs> mm -hmm. i hear you crystal i hear you uh, so he who who is i mean is this a class this is a class you're taking I'm guessing. No, this is a project. This is a project, meaning, yeah. but, okay. Because a note, like, you didn't answer the question. It sounds like it was an assignment. I mean, I'm not, I'm just trying to, trying to figure out, like, yeah, it, it's a, it's a project and you're presenting it. And the, so the notes from your collaborators, is that, am I guessing right? I'm just trying it to. Was I had a couple of notes from collaborators, but it was mostly his note, the big, gigantic, you didn't follow the structure. You his note. So who is, I mean, not, oh, you don't know the name. Yeah. But He's the person who's choosing the writers to produce this piece of different demagogues. So, his, so he's his a producer, project. kind of. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. A producer, and, and yeah. from the writers he's chosen, he's saying, write something. You, yeah. you, you, and you, and then yeah. present it to me, and then we will. I will choose which pieces I want to produce. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm, 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 I'm. I, I, I'll just be honest. I don't, I don't. I mean, if you are given an accurate representation of how he gave you notes, is, is that accurate? Um, I guess what I mean. I think. I think I'm having I'm having trouble trying to be, I guess, original, but also follow the directions, because um, I didn't want to look like everyone else. But at the same time, I was trying to keep an eye on how the notes were as far as those questions. I was trying to answer those questions, um, but 
I also had other things in mind, like, you know, multimedia. I wanted to show one side of her on, you know, at a beauty pageant and, um, and when she's giving speeches and then show this, you know, intimate version of her live on theater. And uh-huh. I guess it got mixed up in like stage directions that it didn't come across. Okay. So, okay. But so the, the basic sort of the basic, um, okay. Are you comfortable with, I mean, it, it's, it's always a drag to hear like, darn, you know, you, you, you have notes and you, you didn't, sure you didn't hit the mark. And that's always a drag. I mean, that's never yeah. great to hear. Sure. Um, um, but it's, it's a producer that you want to work with. Yeah, I do mostly because I feel like most of my writing life, I've been writing for me and I've been producing it myself. And I've just put it, you know, not waited for people to give me money or, you know, to. to... Whoa. Oh, shit. Oh, um, where'd you go? Are you there? Oh, no. Hold on one second. It's okay. I think we lost her for the moment. Okay. We'll go to the next she one comes, when she comes back. Yeah, when she comes back, can we, we'll just jump back. Yeah. Okay. Totally. okay. Laura, we're going to go to you while we wait for Crystal. Great. Thanks. Hi. Hey, Laura. Hi. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. I want to show you. Ooh, oh, office ooh. supplies. Oh, how nice. <laughs> very nice. I like the pink box. Thank you. I was very excited to find the hot pink. Yeah, see? <laughs> so, so yeah, so I've got that for a, um, a new project that I'm yeah. starting in tandem with the old project. Uh-huh. Um, so, my my question is, um, so I you know you were saying about you know you want to write every day and ideally at the same time, mm-hmm. and so I've been trying to do that and and I've been successful in writing just about every day. Uh-huh. Great. Uh, yeah, um, but now that I've got a second project, um, I'm just kind of curious when you have multiple projects going on, mm-hmm. do you pick two different times of the day for two different projects? Do you tend to leave one time of the day for one project and one for another? Or do you just sort of wing it? I'm just, I was just kind of curious. <laughs> oh, wing it, wing it, uh, wing it. Uh, I mean, I wing, I, I like, I wing it so much that it doesn't ever look like I'm winging it. Um, Okay. Um, so the yeah, um, it's it's exciting to have more than one project. What I do um, uh, is I divide. Uh, well, it depends. But right now, what I do is I write on one project um, for two hours, say from ten to noon, mm-hmm. and then I write on the second project from say tutor my kid to avoid the summer slide, and then I write for the second project from one until I come on here and then after I come on here also. Okay, fantastic. So it's two hours on one, two hours on project number one, which is due, has a, a due date in, more in the future. Mm-hmm. I have a little more time to do that one. And then the other one that's, that's more of a priority right now, I spend more time per day on. Okay. So you can totally do it. Um, it's, it's totally, it's, it's doable. You know, it's just it, when I say same time of the day, it's because then you can stick to it. You know, like if you have an alarm clock and you say every morning I get up at seven, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you, you just it holds you to something or I have to be at my job at nine o'clock, you know, or I have my first Zoom call in the morning at nine every day. We have our group meeting at nine or watch me work is at five. Guess yeah. what? I'm turning on the thing at five. You know, that's kind of so it's, it's something that you can hold yourself to, which is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, to give you the writing structure. for yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. It with structure, definitely. Fantastic. So, yeah. Thanks okay. so much. Yeah. And, and, and it's on your hot pink. Uh, oh, thank you. Really gorgeous. <laughs> really gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Sure. Did um, Crystal come back? Crystal's back. Yeah. Oh, um, great. Okay. She was talking about how she was working for this producer, which is a big change from writing things primarily for herself. Is that where we left off, Crystal? Yes. Sorry about that. That's That's okay. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, And I guess because I'm so used to that, I wanted to learn the discipline of writing for someone else, writing for, especially if I want to grow in my career as 
as a writer as well. Um, and so I was invited into this project by someone else. And so it was kind of like, you know, this person is well known in the writing world. And it was like, this would be a golden opportunity to try to write for somebody else and follow their rules, you know, um, mm -hmm. for, for creating a character and creating a scenario and, and such. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, so it sounds like a good, a good thing. Um, and it sounds like you want to sort of reach that mark and, and answer those questions that they say, and you haven't done it yet. So today is Monday, right? You yeah. can present it on Friday or when's the next day you could present? The following Friday. Okay. So um, you're going to have to double down and get the work done then. Right. And, and if they have certain things that certain marks that you have to hit, um, you're going to have to hit them. And if you pitch something to that, let's call that person a producer, and they said, yeah, yeah, put that in your character like that, you've got your answer already. You just got to double down and do the work and do the rewrite. That's, that's all. Yeah. I, what? Um, what? Talk to me. <laughs> I think I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how, how to put this rewrite down and create a brand new one. Um, cause this was, this was the third, this was the fourth draft that was like completely different. So it was like, okay, so how do I make it even different? Like yeah, more I, different I don't think, I don't know if you have to do, make it completely different, Crystal. I just think you have to infuse that rewrite with answers to those questions. Infuse. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like, like see put like if you have a a garden and your garden is all um kale right you've got a garden of kale i want to have some daisies in there so you take you're gonna you're gonna strategically place the daisies in there to give it a shape it sounds kind of you know paint by numbers but it it, it does give it it will give it that shape those the answer that you gave to your producer person and that they said, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Just maybe write that down on an index card. Like this is what I want to infuse each scene with. Let's see how she decided to use the power of her fame and religion, you know, against people or whatever. I'm paraphrasing what you said much more beautifully. You see what I mean? Let's yeah. see what it at every turn. Let's see, and that cousin character, I remember that cousin yeah. was following her. You know what I mean? So that yeah. cousin, so let's let's see let's see that happen at every turn. Let's let's make let's bring that to the surface. I just think it's buried underneath some other stuff. That's my guess. Mm. That's my okay. that's my guess. Um, I don't think you have to like totally throw it out and then start all over. No. no well, no. Let's say no. Let's okay. say. Try it for a day. Say, how can I put that idea and that action, evidence of that action in each scene? Try it like that. Evidence of that action. I'm just, I'm just, I mean, again, not seeing your manuscript and not being able to in this, you know. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, but, but I'm, I'm, because doing a whole big honker of a rewrite doesn't seem like it's something that you can accomplish by next Friday. Right. Okay. Not with these kids. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, so, and look over the notes again. He, he, you said, they said you haven't answered the questions. Yeah. The questions, who am I? How did I get here? What is my hope? Okay. Well, those three questions, they're very specific. I mean, Jim's shaking his head. I mean, I, I have a whole nother thing to say about this but i'm not gonna put it on the chat i mean woof you know but okay answer those questions you know right look look at jim he, you can see his head right i mean no right answer those questions who am i how did i get here and what is my hope mm -hmm. right i mean if she has to give a a, a, a a speech to her cousin in one scene you know i'm talking about their past yeah. If she has to give a, have a conversation with her best friend, or I don't know the characters in the play, but you know, one of her followers, yeah. what is her hope? You know, answer those questions. Find scene, places in the scenes where she can address those questions. Okay. I think I can do that. 
you know, it's like, it's like a, a, I don't know, I can't, the analogy, the garden analogy might not have been, it's like a skin graft or a transplant. You're going to take, you know, it can, and it can totally work. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're going to have to work on it hard though. You're going to have to crank up the how, the, how much and how hard you're working on it. Yeah. I, I can, I can um, dedicate the time to do it. You know, I just, Good. I'm just trying to get the brain space. The right. brain to do yeah, it. We'll make the brain space. Don't wait for it to come. And I would suggest try to crank out a draft by Friday and then polish it for the next week, the week and present it the following Friday. I would say okay. really crank. How many pages is it? Uh, 24. Okay. 24. Okay. 24. Guess what? 24. What's 24 divided by five, you know, right? So we're rewriting, you know, you're rewriting like five pages a day by yeah. Friday, and then you're going to rewrite until the next Friday. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Just look at those questions. Go. How can I put this stuff in this scene I got right now? How can I put this stuff in this scene I got right now? See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Crystal. Um, all right, Chris, you're up next. Are you there? Hello. Um, my question is, um, I finished a number of drafts of a short film script that I was working on and I feel like that, that project needs space. Um, and so I'm now looking at what the next project is that I want to work on. Mm -hmm. and I've been doing free writes and I've been drafting different story outlines. Um, and I have some like ideas that feel larger. Um, mm -hmm. but when I try to um, go into them, I feel like I lose steam with the idea, like it, in the marathon running analogy, it feels like I haven't like worked up enough stamina yet in order to get through a larger piece. Um, but it feels like with my smaller ideas, like when I looked at, look at the story outlines, it doesn't feel like there's any that are grabbing me yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering what you do when you're between project ideas and, uh, and like how you, uh, like, I don't know, get started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, Chris, I mean, when I, I, one day I will be between project ideas and then I'm going to sit, I mean, I'm at my mom's house right now. I'm going to go in the backyard. Maybe it'll happen in the next you know, month or I don't know what. Um, I go and sit in the sunshine and go. I don't do shit. <laughs> I don't do shit. I take a, a, a chill. I, you know, I like read a book, watch a movie. You know, um. So that's that. Okay. I just, I just enjoy sort of the the space between the projects. That's one thing. It might be a good time also to fill the well. You know, um, between. I mean, say go back to your marathon analogy, which is which I love because I used to be a long distance runner, and and it's like you don't want to run like a marathon back to back. You know what I mean? You want to take a little bit of a, 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 a rest time, right? So there could be that, even if it's just three days, just to go, hmm. I, I've, it's been like, it's been okay. like a month at this it's point. It's been a month, okay, okay. So maybe there's a little, like it's time to work now. Yeah, and I don't know if it's that like, that the ideas just don't, like I don't have enough of a, a seed of an idea to grow something and that's why none of them have taken yet or if it's an issue with um uh like m m my craft or not being able to focus or just like buckle down and and outline the thing and write the thing but it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it has the like the the wings to it yet if that makes uh -huh. sense well, maybe it doesn't, and that's okay. Maybe it's a sh maybe you'll write a couple more short things before you write a long thing. I mean, I would say, I mean, just listen to your words, and I've used them too. You know, focus and buckle down, and you know, get to it kind of thing. Uh -huh. I would, um, I would say, how about, you know, in, embrace where you are be grateful for what you got not that you're not Chris mm -hmm. not that you're not you know but but maybe your next project is another short thing 
You know, I mean, Sam Shepard said, you know, what is this thing with time? Everyone wants to be, if you want to be a real writer, you write long things and not real writers write short things. He said, that's a bunch of bullshit. You know, um, we can, we can write a, a number of different things in a number of different lengths and they're all great. They can all be great. So, you know, you can, you don't have to do like the roof of the roof, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel to be an artist. You can be like Joseph Cornell and do little Cornell boxes, you know, yeah. it, it's all beautiful and cool. Um, and you can do both, you know? So I would say if you're, you tend to be writing right now, you, you, you run out of steam and write a short thing. That's okay. If you write one every other day, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's beautiful. Um, and allow your artistic process to flower. Mm, to flower. Okay. On its own. It knows more than you do. Yeah. I don't want you to buckle it down and force it to do it. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound like a uh, great thing. To it doesn't read. sound like you lack focus. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you lack focus to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't sound like you're lazy or any of those words that we like beat ourselves. Oh, stupid. Yeah. You're not doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're doing you're right in the flow man okay you know just to, just really be grateful for it it's a beautiful time thank you you're welcome thanks Chris. <laughs> thanks um all right we've got about 10 minutes left i think we don't have a question at the moment oh, oh well, you know what we have to do <laughs> buckle down <gasps> oh greg oh here oh, we God. here we go greg we'll practice our posture oh, oh yeah oh yeah Okay. I really need to. Oh, there we go. You do? Okay. Oh, are you there, Greg? Yeah. Hi. I was just trying to. I'm oh, here. sorry. Hey, Greg. <laughs> hi. Not a burning question, but since no one had their hand up, I always have a question. Oh. Um, so I do a lot of work that that's research based and actually, so I'm working from a trial transcript right now, oh, wow. and um, I can't actually. I I was at the trial and I took a lot of notes, but I can't actually get the trial transcripts because I have to go to Baltimore and get, you know, go to the courthouse and all that stuff. So I'm working from my notes and, you know, I took really solid notes and I'm kind of writing a scene out of this um, prosecutory thing, but it's not what's been said. And I'm just, I, I my idea is that eventually I'm going to be able to do a workshop in Baltimore and go get the proper word and all that stuff. But until that time, I'm feeling weird about it <laughs> because it's important stuff and, and um, you know, it's, it's real, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a real thing. And if I were to do a workshop before I could get the research, I guess I'm just wondering how you might approach such a situation. I know you don't write from the real the, or the, the, the literally real. <laughs> I I just this morning I wrote something and I was like I can't find the actual quote that the man said so I'm gonna write this and you know I'm gonna find the quote in a week or two or whatever and I'll pop it in there that's what I would suggest Greg go ahead and do what you can when you can and and leave the rest for when you can do that so, and if you were to say have a workshop before you could get the right words, you'd just go ahead and do it with I would, Yes, sure, Greg. I would make a big disclaimer, or you could even type at the top of the scene just for yourself. Don't worry, Greg, you can't get the transcript, but when you do, you're going to pop in the correct words. Don't hate on yourself too much for it, man. Just keep going. <laughs> I mean, just write the scene. Right? I mean, right? You know me. Yeah, I know. Right? And then it's okay. You can also, by the time you, if you go, get to Baltimore before you get the transcripts, you can tell the actors in scene, ha 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 ha, it's a big, 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 I couldn't do that, please forgive me, I will, by the time we did it, big, big, big. Okay. But, but the fact that you were actually there and you actually took notes is a great credit to, to your writing and your commitment to the project. Okay, so, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're not slacking, man. Okay. All right, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> I know y'all are tough, man. Y'all are like tough on yourselves. <laughs> oh, crap. Um, up next, we've got Dwayne. Oh, yeah. Hey, Dwayne. Hi. Hi. 
Hey, thanks for taking my call, I guess, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am, uh, what happened with the project that I'm working on is I got the rights to a bunch of great music, like songs and like rock songs. Yeah. So, and like, you know, kind of like Green Day did American Idiot kind of a situation where I'm, I have these great rock songs and I'm trying to form them into uh, a full length musical. And the songs are great. And, but I've been having a difficult time finding ways for the characters to justify their points of view to sing a particular song. And I'm working with the writer a bit to like change some lyrics, but this puzzle has been really hounding me for uh, several years. I've been working on this project and I don't know really how to like find a way to justify the songs from the characters perspectives and the moments I'm just having a hard time. The pieces almost fit, but they don't quite. And I don't know necessarily even what my question is for you, but that uh, I just wanted to see if there's any kind of insight you might be able to give. Yeah, it, it sounds like a really cool project. Uh, asking, you don't have to tell me uh, specifically, but are the songs written, are they from the same band? Yeah, they're the same okay. band. And they okay. have a, there's a thematic, you know, part of oh. their music pretty thematic, even characters that appear in various songs. Oh, that makes it, oh, that right. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, it's tricky. Um, it might, it's something that you might get so close and then solve the rest of it in workshop. You know, once you get in a room full of people, you might, if, if the pieces are almost fitting, they might click in totally in a workshop situation. Um, You have a list of the songs that you want to include. Do you have the order pretty much set? Well, you know, I've, I've been shaping it for a long period of time. And yes, I think I have a basic structure, but uh -huh. sometimes, you know, I can't make the scene as intense as the music that right. it needs to justify. Right, right. Maybe, I mean, sometimes it, it's weird when you, because when you work with music, as you know, you, you can pull back and have fewer words in there and let the song really take over. You know, mm -hmm. um, you want, you can let the song take over. You can let the song um, fuel. Uh, well, I'm telling you all the things you, you already know from working on it. It's tricky not to, you know, not to sort of know specifically. And I don't want you to, I want you to keep the specifics private. But um, I would just say, do this, try, if you have a, the great song, um, take away all the dialogue. And see what happens if you just run the scene before it, the song, and then the scene after it, right? And you're, you're going to be tracking the character who sings the song, right? Yeah. Okay? So with no dialogue, no scene, just say nothing happens. Just say the only thing that happens in that scene is somebody sings that song. And then you have the scene before it and the scene after it. And you could do what, what children do when they learn, or people do when they learn to read, context. If you don't know the meaning of something, you get it out of context. You look at the sentence, right? So sometimes you might get like, oh, this is what might be happening in that, in that song. You could also maybe, so you could try that. You could also maybe play around with the tempo of the song. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, you know, like anthems could be sung as maybe more ballad -y songs to give you sort of another way of looking at the song, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because you, you know the, the writers of the song. So you can play around with the way the song is, is presented. Sometimes, you know, a happy song could be turned into a sad song with different sort of chordal progressions underneath. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of talking, but just, just play with it. Try, try everything since you have a huge bunch of it already done. Just kind mm -hmm. of throw things up in the air and see what happens. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sounds like a great project. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Thanks. Thanks, Dwee. Um, all right, we've got about two and a half minutes left and we don't have a question at the moment. Oh, we've got two people raising their hands. Uh oh, uh, now I have to talk really fast. Okay, fast. Okay, Bernita, go. go. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, this is Lori. Hi, Audrey. Hey. Everyone. Um, so I might share again tomorrow because I have some updates on my going in hot but smart with cool. my um, 
Oh, cool. Uh, the magazine that I mentioned. But at this moment, I just wanted to share with everyone that I have a profoundly renewed or new uh, passion and love of trees. I'm sitting outside right now and what used to be behind me was this beautiful, unique tree that my landlord told me he was going to shorten, but he actually chopped it down yesterday. And I'm like, I was devastated. And so in my 20 minutes today, I am writing about this whole process of being connected to nature and really being forced to, um, how do we show up for unexpected or shocking disappointments? Mm -hmm. And I think I have particular attachment um, because this outdoor space has been my oasis during quarantine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a friend who called it Arbor Side to just mm -hmm. kill, I mean, just chop down. And I don't think the tree is dead. So, you know, I've renamed it the tree of resilience. Uh -huh. could come back. And, um, but with the writing, maybe just how often, I'm curious, how often do you find your writing to be just a, like a source of moving through emotions or life experiences? I mean, I feel like at this moment, writing about this experience around the tree, and I did a little tree honoring ceremony this morning, that it's like my therapy right mm -hmm, now to, mm -hmm. to express it on paper and mm -hmm. to, as always, find a way to bring about a sense of gratitude or, or inspiration for someone else. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's all that the artistic process is. And when we stray from it, maybe that's when we're, you know, in the wrong, you know what I mean? When we're thinking more about how we can cash in on something, how we can make a career move, you know, maybe that's when we get off track. And maybe, like I was saying the other day about Pythagoras said about music, that the first uh, music is first and foremost so that we can align ourselves more effectively with ourselves. So if you play an instrument, it's not like, how am I going to make a hit? It's more like, how do I align myself with myself? And I think the same thing is about, uh, we could say the same thing about writing or painting or dancing or being a good spouse or being a wonderful parent or parenting. You know, how do I align myself with myself? Uh, that's the first thing we need to focus on. So if you're feeling the need to, you know, you're feeling that in your writing, I think that's exactly what it's for, really. Everything else is just, you know, bells and whistles. So you're on the right track, sister. Yeah. It's 6.01. It's 6.01. On a Monday, guys. On a Monday. I, yeah, I was like, wow, it feels like a Monday. <laughs> it is a Monday. <laughs> it really was a very Monday Monday. Yeah, yeah, Monday's Monday, Monday. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, but as a reminder, everybody, please sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern time every single day, Monday to Thursday. And I will uh, on the public theater or website or HowlRound, and I'll send you a link between 3 and 4.30 Eastern. And we'll see you here at 5. All right. Thank you, guys. Love you. <laughs> Thanks, SLP. Bye. We love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye.